Hi, welcome to Alberni Thrive. I'm Alicia LaRue. And I'm Eric Plummer. And today we'll be discussing citizen engagement during the political process. I find it's a really exciting time to be part of Port Alberni. Lots of really neat things happening right now. There's this critical period that Port Alberni is going through, through right now where it's trying to rediscover itself. And there's a lot of discussion about what works for Port Alberni, what's great about Port Alberni, what needs to be changed in Port Alberni. Between the elections that are held in the city every four years, do citizens have any power to determine the direction of their municipal government? It's a question that cuts to the heart of the democratic principles that we hold dear in Canada. Yet governing a municipality for the people, by the people, is often easier said than done. Today we're joined by some active members of the community to exchange some ideas about this issue. We're joined by Malcolm Meninga, a Port Alberni resident and member of the Municipal Civic Affairs Committee. Port Alberni resident John Douglas and former mayor and current city councillor Dennis Sove. Thanks very much for joining us today, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. It's a great topic. Yeah. Mm. So I just want to start right out in talking about something that has been discussed uh, uh, frequently recently, which is in-camera meetings. We've been seeing there's been 17 in-camera meetings held this year, 24 were held last year. Is it necessary for a municipality to have so many in-camera meetings? John, I want to start out with you as you have the most experience here in local government. What do you think? Um, well, I think, you know, here one part of our topics from what I understand too is about openness in government and the more secrecy you have, the more secret meetings you have, the more the perception can grow that you're not being completely open and engaged with the public. So it's a, I think it's a really, you know, and I'm sure everyone who's been through the process will agree, a really fine balancing act that a council has to do in deciding whether to have a secret uh, in-camera meeting or what particular issues are going to be on those in-camera agendas and really uh, letting the public know very, very clearly, specifically when those meetings are taking place, who's attending, specifically what the issue is and the process because there's a process behind an in-camera meeting where you have a select topic has to be under a, a certain category to be eligible to be in camera and then during that in-camera meeting you have to engage someone specifically to take the minutes during that meeting and to make sure that nobody strays from that topic onto other topics which can be very easily done I've seen it happen um, you know, in front of my eyes many times. So it's, it's something that I think uh, council really has to try and keep a check on and try and keep those in-camera meetings to a bare minimum. Why do in-camera meetings need to happen? Why is it necessary in effectively running a local government? Dennis, do you have any thoughts? Uh, well, pretty much uh, I tend to, first of all, I don't like the word secret because there's no such thing within our, our, our politics uh, when it comes to in-camera meetings. In-camera meetings are always, there's minutes taken, there's notes. Uh, it's kept in camera, it's kept sealed. Uh, we have great representation on council that uh, a lot of us fight to get things out of camera and so forth. And we work to that goal. So using the word secret is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not a, it's irresponsible to say that I feel because there's no secrets. It's all public engagement when it comes to city council. When I say public engagement, in-camera issues having to do with labor issues, uh, having to do with land sales, and having to do with laws. Three simple topics. Now for the minutes to have that out in the open, personally, if I was an employee of the city, I would not have liked to have a subject line on the open for the public stating that John Doe discussion about his future employment. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think he would appreciate it or not. When it comes to land deals, you know, I don't think a person that's put interest in purchasing a property owned by the city to let the public know or the outside world know that he has shown interest into that because, you know, there's people would want to rebid and everything and it would just ruin the deal. 
Mm -hmm. And when it comes to laws, everything comes out of camera when it comes to laws. After a proposed law comes forward, it always goes out to open a public meeting. Now, do we have a record of in-camera meeting uh, uh, as this council? You gotta understand, it's a new council. Mm -hmm. You gotta understand that we're not up to par, and I'll be the first one to admit it, that we know everything, every bit about the community charter. This is why we count on staff to tell us exactly how we need to handle information. Mm -hmm. we, we strongly count on staff. Um, you know, we have two veterans on city council and, uh, you know, we pose questions, but pretty much myself, I count on staff to tell me when is appropriate or not. Now, but, Malcolm, a uh, question to you. So, sorry if I don't mean to. Um, but, I mean, you are an active citizen in this community, and you've been here for many years. Now, what, what's your take on, um, from an outside point of view, um, on the current mayor and council as far as transparency? Well, I think that I, I want to know how you feel engaged in the government process. Yeah. Are you feeling left out here? Well, or first, yeah, of all, yeah, yeah. first of all, let's go back to the in-camera mm -hmm. meeting. You, Dennis, you mentioned you don't like the word secret meetings because it's not secret. How many cameras are filming these meetings? Are there cameras in there? Then let's not call them in-camera meetings if they're not. Because that back. was my <laughs> concern, is I do perceive them as secret meetings. This, and this, certainly there this are... This is actually a legal term that's mm -hmm. put out there. But there is no camera. We didn't, we didn't choose that. There's no camera. Okay. There's somebody taking notes. But okay. I believe, um, and I've looked at the community charter about this, there are minutes that are taken of each of these meetings. Um, how can we determine, I mean, I, an important issue here is, and I mean, as a private citizen, I, I'm feeling kind of left out about what's going on. I mean, to be honest, when, I, I look at the agendas every time they come out, and when I say it's an in-camera meeting, I think, oh, damn, like, I want to know what's happening. I want to know what decisions are being made about the future of my community. Is there any way of telling more about if you have to have something in camera, maybe telling people more why it needs to be in camera so that maybe people don't feel as excluded. Do you think there's possibilities there to explore? Well, if you look at the bulletins when they're put out, it explains why mm -hmm. it has to be in camera, okay? We do everything we can to possibly bring it out of camera. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, there's me and a couple of counselors, that's the main goal, to bring everything out of camera. Do we like the in-camera issue? even before I joined the election? Absolutely not. By, I under so? by understand the fact why it's yeah. in camera. But why is there such a change from this council to the last council? Because, because the, this, this council has made several changes. Mm -hmm. You know, this council came out of the gate running. And don't forget, this council is actually a council that's been, and I'm including the mayor, voted by the people. We are not a small group trying to represent a city and uh, do what we can and have personal agendas. Those personal agendas on council are filter, filtered through and dealt with by majority of democracy when it comes to a vote. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just actually open and because we had so many, it's because council came out running out of the gates and wanted change. Mm -hmm. You asked me a question about citizen engagement. Mm -hmm. So do I feel as a, as, as a citizen engaged? We've had the budget meetings and you're one of this council. It was quite well attended. This past year, hardly any, any of the public was there. Mm -hmm. And it's largely because the public increasingly feels disengaged. And myself as well, trying to ask questions, a simple yes or no answer, and the questions don't get answered. So it's, I do feel there's a strong sense of passive resistance from the powers. I don't know the direction that we are heading in. I would like to know that direction. I cannot get a clear on, answer on almost any question I have. So do I feel engaged? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. Disengaged, rather. And, now the question, and increasingly like, disengaged. Do you send emails? Like, how do you become an, an active, like, are no emails being answered or just talking to them? I might get a response, but it doesn't touch upon the does question. A yes or no yeah. answer. A perfect example, last council meeting, Roland stood up in the but just before the council, at the beginning of the council meeting mm -hmm. and mentioned what's going on here, I've asked a simple question 
several months ago and I've yet to receive an answer. Mm -hmm. And so there's another example of a strong sense of disengagement. Yeah. I mean, is this a learning process? Like, as you mentioned that, I mean, five out of the seven council members are new. Could it be that they're going through a learning process in this as well and finding a way of effectively running a government while not um, letting residents feel excluded from the process? Can I add a couple things here? I've been quiet for a minute mm -hmm. here. Yeah. But um, first of all, we need to remember that all the people on our council were, as Dennis mentioned, elected. And they're all good people, just like we all are here, right? They're all there trying to do good things. I mean, mm -hmm. One of the things I would suggest is that um, if you talk about a topic such as conflict of interest, mm -hmm. um, sometimes that issue comes up with, with issues in the community. And one of the general rules I learned was that is if there's a perception of a conflict of interest, then you should treat that as a conflict of interest. I think what's happening here, because of the, the new council, they've changed the staff all around, uh, you know, quite significantly. So people that may have been there to offer advice aren't there or in different areas now. And because of the, the numerous in-camera meetings and, um, <clears throat> and other things as well, there's a growing perception of this issue with secrecy, secret agendas, uh, the public not being part of the process. And that perception is a very, it's like a, a disease within the, the local governance. And that's the perception. Even if, you know, they're, they're doing their best and they're keeping their minutes and all that because of this, there's a growing perception amongst the entire community on all different sectors of people feeling that they're not getting their questions answered and that they're not being properly engaged. And that's the perception that I think an elected council really has to struggle mm -hmm. to defeat. And the only way they can defeat that is by being completely open, mm -hmm. perhaps by recognizing, I went through this where I, I sort of believed in a certain issue and then at a certain point I came, hey, that's all wrong, you know, we're gonna change our ways, we're gonna move on in this direction instead. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that this council and other councils, I don't think we should just be focusing on this council, you know, counseling in general in small communities. The ability to recognize a perception that's causing problems in the community, starting to alienate citizens, and they need to readdress that somehow. Maybe have more open meetings, maybe have a community engagement meeting, maybe education to the community about the process of like this in camera yeah. thing, right? And also, I mean, that's like, Dennis, thanks for coming again. Like this right here is part of the process and yeah. being able to. Like this is, yeah, this I mean, is this a really is, good step. So, you know, the, the biggest frustration I found, and first of all, I never thought leaving law enforcement for so long I get into politics because I never liked politics. I just consider myself as a public servant. And to attend council, I could tell you right now and rest assured from the citizens, there's nobody on council, including the mayor, that has carte blanche. Mm -hmm. It goes through a democratic process where it's voted in. If we lose, if I don't get my way, it happens. I gotta live with it and deal with it. When it comes to public engagement, I gotta be honest with you, I'm, I'm very, very disappointed. I attend council meetings where there's just a few people and all that. There's not much for debate. Mm -hmm. I thank God for people like Roland Smith and uh, Neil Anderson and people like that that are actually out in the public and they come out and ask those hard questions. Can those questions could be answered? We have a protocol that we do accept these questions. We need to be prepared to answer them and answer them properly. Off the cuff answers to me is not appropriate. It should just be brought to staff and mentioned back at the next meeting so they could do their research, just like I prepared before I came down here. But the thing is, is that it's very important that people engage themselves within the city. The opportunity is there every Monday. The opportunity is there when it comes to emails. The opportunity is there when it comes to phone calls. I average about 82 phone calls per week on a lot of issues. And, and I know uh, on a certain issue, uh, you know, there's been petition out there and all that. But honestly, if I took a petition, I would have something that would counterbalance that. The opportunities you know? are there, Dennis, but 
if these phone calls are never returned, the emails are never Absolutely. answered, the questions are dismissed, which Absolutely. I've experienced for months and months and months, apparently Roland has as well, yeah. Neil Anderson has as well, the public increasingly just becomes disengaged because yeah. it becomes a waste of time to try and get involved. And the thing is, right? that's I'm not saying council is perfect. We're, we're still in the growing stages. Is that acceptable? Absolutely not. And I'm the first one to say it. When it comes to accountability and transparency, the public could rest assured that there's transparency when it comes to counsel and accountability, because we follow the rules by the rules. Now, is there an issue about trans uh, transparency within counsel? Maybe. You know, people having their own agendas, keeping quiet and not sharing any information. I have arrived at counsel personally myself, attended counsel, and prior we get the agenda within, and I'm totally surprised on the subject because maybe I wasn't part of the engagement on that topic. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's any increase to be done or better progress to be done, is actually some transparency within council. Mm -hmm. That I would agree with. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the public and say that they have no say and so on, absolutely not. You know, just like uh, you had explained with the budget. At the, our last budget meeting, and certain issues like, you know, Canal Beach and so forth was up there. Yes, it was and, up and, there. And I was, and People I was put pleased. stickers on there. They put notes <coughs> on the stickers yeah. and go through the... the, but the thing no, that is, was this year as well. well. No, it and was this year. People don't get engaged because but pretty Malcolm. much predominantly what was, what was wanted yeah. is disregarded. Yeah. But so Malcolm, people become disengaged. And the year before it, it was it, like that It's too. pretty disappointing to me when it comes that I see more staff on their own time, city staff attending these type of meetings or, you know, for the public than or actual residents. Right. Well, you know what that message tells me? Two things. Number one, they're totally disengaged and don't trust us. Mm -hmm. But that was too early in the stage of this political term that we have right now. What I find, what message I got from that, is that the citizens of Port Alberni are satisfied they got proper representation when they voted. That's what I'm getting. They don't want to be part of that and all that. They're satisfied to let the elected people make the decision, and that's why we're there. Mm -hmm. Are we doing a big salary? Absolutely not. This yeah. is mostly volunteer. How would you then explain the difference there's between... A, there's what? definitely a learning process here, and I think mm -hmm. that there's improvement to be made um, on both sides of this issue so that we can somehow foster a healthier relationship absolutely. between the local government and citizens. Um, I wanted to bring up the topic of social media, particularly Facebook. Um, the amount of information that is exchanged every hour of every day is enormous, especially in this town. Um, it's in many ways surpassed newspapers as a source for people to get information about their immediate environment instantaneously. Um, AV Chatterbox, to name one local site, has over 8,000 members. It's huge. How does the local government use social media, and how can we foster a more healthy exchange of in ideas and concerns over social media. Dennis, you're a, uh, you regularly um, comment on social media. What are your thoughts about this? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, when it comes to the city, we have our own website and we announce a lot of things on it. That's one way to communicate with the public. You got to understand also that due to the loss of one of the newspapers we had, uh, it gave us, it was a big blow to our community when it comes to communication. Because this was a daily paper where people were looking for it for information and, and have a good unbiased uh, investigating skills and done in good articles. Social media, is it important? Absolutely. You're not gonna get the whole consent of counsel on this because a lot of them don't like to go on social media. I think any avenues of communication with your public, you have to use. This is me going door to door. This is me going to markets. This is me. And every counselor take that opportunity. But social media is the key. This is where public could actually be open and say their comments and enter in dialogue. At the same time, there are issues with social media and that um, I think that just the, the means of uh, communication can allow some people to be very reckless with their comments and make accusations without really doing their homework. And, you know, call for inciting a riot sometimes, as we've seen recently about the sale of the old plywood land next to Canal Beach. How do we manage a healthier, more respectful conversation over social media? John, you have any thoughts on this? 
Well, I use social media now, you know, and uh, in the past on a consistent basis throughout my term, you know, sort of social media kind of came into play when I was a councillor and then it grew as a mayor. It's one more tool, right, of uh, getting the message out and engaging with people. You have to keep in mind, of course, you're in a public forum and there's all those issues, uh, just like if you're speaking to the media, you know, and, and being interviewed, you know, you have to always keep that in the back of the mind that you're speaking in a public forum and, and the proper, you know, um, legalities and things have to be followed. But it's another tool and it's a really good tool for getting out there and getting your point across and raising issues. And, and even though you can maybe only speak to a, a limited extent on some issues, it opens the door for saying, well, you know, perhaps we should have a community engagement session on this topic mm -hmm. at which you could go into it more thoroughly. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, it's a really good uh, tool. And that's what I'd say back to what we were talking about earlier is just whatever council can use to welcome the public and invite the public in to be part of the process, uh, that, needs to be, that needs to be done. And that's what you can kind of see building here is a, the sense, a perception that there's a reluctance on the part of some members of council to fully engage. And that has to be turned around. So it's actually an invitation. You know, come on up, come to our council meetings, get engaged, ask questions, make suggestions, and bring forward your ideas. And social media is one more opportunity to do that. Malcolm, you're on Facebook all the time. What are your thoughts of using social media to engage citizens in their local government. I wish you wouldn't realize I was on Facebook all the time. I try not to be. <laughs> but you know, I really do appreciate Dennis, Chris Alamany, and Shari are yeah. very good at interacting. Yeah. The other four basically don't exist on social media. Even on email, I've emailed Jack on a few issues several times, never responds. So I saw him on the, a few weeks ago on the street and said, Jack, why don't you ever respond to me? And he says, well, which email address do you use? I said, your Port Alberni one. He says, oh, I never checked that one. Mm -hmm. So engagement is more difficult on that. Mm -hmm. So, and contacting e um, Facebook is just one more method of getting the message out there. Yeah, and like kudos on, you know, you guys using social media, because I imagine that there's an element of, uh, of stress in it somewhat, because you start dialoguing, you start talking, and you don't want to say anything wrong. It's definitely or, risky. Like, well, yeah, the, the it's definitely thing, a more risky thing. The thing is the approach, and, and I have a saying, if you don't hide nothing, you got nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. My life, I don't have a specific uh, post just for political. My Facebook is actually my personal family Facebook. I got a close to 400 friends and all that, but this is my way to communicate. But going back to your question about certain people inciting as into having protests and civil disobedience and so forth, people got to understand Facebook is, is open. They got to consider the source and make their own decisions. But like I said, it's a key factor within in touching base with your community. I was, so Will Will's would like to add that I found on Facebook, some people are incredibly brave behind a screen, but you can only establish so much, much through texting and typing. Mm -hmm. You say, hey, let's meet for coffee. And those people generally tend to cower. Yeah. Well, even so, as Eric brought up too, like the, you know, someone just sitting at home in their PJs, just stirring stuff up, being those trolls. Like mm -hmm. that's the, that's the risky thing with. But um, I take the opportunity to educate. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of these people with all due respect, you don't want to put the whole blame on them. They don't know how things are run. Mm -hmm. And that's why mm -hmm. I like to, and educate people how things are run and, you know, and discuss that. So I don't want to put the full blame on them, but the thing is, is the fact they have, I believe, strong in freedom of speech. But the thing is, if they're saying something that's adamantly wrong, mm -hmm. I try and correct them and say, this is the way it is. Mm -hmm. And I always finish my conversations, very friends and everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. So I, I think a big issue here is finding a way to progress the relationship between citizens and their local government. How can we improve that relationship? John, what are your thoughts? Well, participatory governance is an interesting model that's been used in some communities. Um, for example, if you have certain issues, it's sort of like a mini referendum, but without all the, um, all the, the bureaucracy involved around actual reference, participatory governance would be if you have a particular issue, present it to the community and the community comes forward in a meeting and they have a vote and, and they 
and then the council bases the decision on that issue. Uh, it's been done in Tofino on, you know, sort of certain budget concerns, like how much money do you want to allocate to sidewalks this year, mm -hmm. or, you know, issues like that. And so participatory governance is a really good model to, to follow throughout um, the tenure of uh, council, and it, you know, it's a reason to get together for meetings on issues. It opens up that engagement aspect to the community. Um, that's one idea that we could move forward. I'd love to see uh, not just Dennis, but all his colleagues sitting around a table at a medium such as this discussing issues the way Dennis is mm -hmm. about, you know, social media, about in-camera meetings, about uh, the Ombudsman's Guide for Open Meetings, and just discussing it openly with people. Instead, there's sort of a perception, kind of like a fear of, oh my goodness, people are going to ask more questions, yeah. you know. Well, I mean, even we don't with, with Mike, like, <laughs> you know, to be honest with you, stuff, we tried right? to get Mike on the last show, and we changed schedules to to get him on, and unfortunately, you know, I mean, he, he was wasn't he, was, able, he to wasn't able to, but yeah. we've really tried well, to bend with, upside with the, down and, backwards. And I don't do respect when it comes to the mayor. Yeah. Uh, people have to understand his role. And I don't want I, to... I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't think oh, we should introduce the thing is, personal people. The thing is... No, okay, but she's asking a, a question about the yeah. mayor, so yeah. I would like to answer yeah. the question. Yeah. The thing is, he has a schedule yeah. from, I could attest, from 6 in the morning, mm -hmm. and I even receive emails from him at around 3 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So he has a very busy schedule. Yeah. I do not know this mayor to shy away from anything. Yeah. He's always ready to speak, even if I agree or don't. Uh, you know, with all due respect to the mayor, he's always available to the community. Yeah. It, it, but I mean, it's simple as that. This is a platform Absolutely. for public engagement. Absolutely. So, you know, I just wanted to mention that. I know that, you know, it, it was, it, you know, we really tried to get yeah. him on. And be, we'll hopefully you know, get him on next time, you know, yeah. but this is a, this no, is a yeah. chance to get I'm, I'm people sure you, I'm part sure of the I'm sure he process. will. He's very open. But just yeah. to follow up on your question. Yeah. So, you know, sitting around the table discussing this. So, mm -hmm. you know, we used to have those things like uh, coffee with the mayor coffee with council yeah. where people can just come in and drop in and and talk about any topic so mm -hmm. uh, ideas in that vein I think are really healthy for a community yeah yeah for sure welcome how do you think we can improve from here what I think we really lack here is where are we going to be in five years or in ten years time frankly I have no idea I've tried to get a clear answer from that I'm pointing to the strategic to the strategic plan to the vision 2020 read through those documents and I see in both cases that we're actually deviating or contradicting exactly what those plans are stated so to me that doesn't give a great sense of hope what are we going to be I have no idea and I would like to get that established before we talk about which sidewalk should we work on which little trivial parks or or something. There's, there's some finer details. Let's have a real focus. Let's have the real vision that we can stick to, that we can see through timelines. Yes, we've accomplished this in year one, this in year three, and so on. Mm -hmm. We know where we're going. And that, yeah. that we completely lack here. Mm -hmm. And that is a frustration, probably my biggest frustration. Yeah. Well, and that point, does turn away investment. Because nobody wants to invest in a failing community. And sadly, Port Alberni is a failing community, yeah. and it doesn't give hope I mean, that we right are here, progressing. Obviously, this is uh, grounds for a whole nother show. But right now, we're running out of time. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. No, <laughs> so, I just want to say we hear the public's frustrations mm -hmm. the thing is this is our first year in the mandate there's so much to accomplish our five-year plan is there and it wasn't written up just because we written we wrote it it's actually a goal that we're setting a strategic plan my thing to tell you be patient in four years or whatever near the end of our term and you see it don't change then I would start complaining but this, you got to allow us to start growing and discover ourselves and getting to this five-year plan goal. But we don't know where you're, yeah, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> <Sorry. So laughs> we're, yeah, <laughs> next topic for next show. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, thank, thank you, you so much, much, you guys all for coming. Well. It was oh, great, thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Eric. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, so uh, definitely make sure to check out our website, www.albernithrive.com. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.